Well, hi again. It's great to see you guys. Uh, so I think that brunch is such a comforting food meal that we really ought to do more of it. Um, so I'm going to show you some more brunch items. We do have a brunch number one that's already online. But today we're going to make three things. We're going to make popovers. We're going to make a frittata of sorts. And I'm going to talk about how to make an omelet uh, and various principles behind that. So uh, first of all, popovers which uh, for my friends that are uh, watching from the UK or, or, or other British areas, um, similar to Yorkshire pudding, although the fat that's used is generally uh, beef suet, um, only we use butter for the popovers. So uh, I, um, I'm gonna go first of all with some eggs. You know, really important uh, to support local businesses, especially now, but. But really always, um, especially like things like eggs are much better when they're homegrown. So we've got here some Silver Valley Farm eggs, which are locally grown outside of uh, uh, Crawfordsville. I've been eating these for well over a decade and they are so much better than what you can buy in the store. It's, it's a small difference in price. Honestly, folks, you know, you got to take care of it. And also the, uh, the proprietor always throws in a pulled egg or two. So you see how there's a nice pretty green one there. So uh, I kind of like that. So the pop popover is a very simple recipe. It's essentially like a pancake batter. We start with six uh, eggs. I should I maybe talk about this before with eggs. If you want to learn how to crack them, twist like this, and then the, after you hit it, and then out they go. Every now and then you get a shell in there, but uh, you can always take that out. So we go with six eggs here. This is very similar to a recipe that was recently uh, published in the New York Times, by the way. Um, I have to tell you that uh, I'm going to give a quick rinse of my hands here. That uh, I began uh, learned about these first in the 1980s in a restaurant called Casablanca Restaurant in Santa Cruz, California, because uh, I took brunch there. Uh, with a good friend of mine who was actually the popover expert. Her name is Rose Dean, uh, now Rose Dean Evers. Uh, Rose, we used to call her Rose James Dean, but I used to call her Rose James Dean popover queen. And she makes a much better popover than I do, uh, but I'm gonna do my best here, Rose. Uh, she and her sister Moira uh, worked with me there, and. Uh, and Moira or Mimi, uh, the two of them, because they were from New York City, they called me Rick the Hick because I was from Vermont. So, Rick the Hick with a big, big smile. Okay, <laughs> gonna keep it PG here. Um, all right, so six eggs and then a couple cups of, of uh, milk go in here. You don't want to you don't want to over mix. This is like a, this is a dish where you don't want to over mix. Uh, you want to keep it kind of light, but mix it in as well as you can. Uh, and then after the milk, we'll do uh, a couple of cups of, of flour. One, two, probably should have done those one at a time. Truth be told, uh, I think I've admitted before, I'm, I'm really not a good baker. Uh, many, very few people can do both well, cooking and baking. Um, but I do what I can. But principally, you need to measure better if you're a baker. That's, that's my biggest problem. I don't measure as well as I should. So then uh, we're going to, this is a, so basically like a pancake batter or more, or more properly perhaps a, a crepe batter for crepe pancakes, um, a thin batter. Um, and uh, this, the only other thing that's, things that are going to go in here, we, we're going to have a, a six tablespoons of melted butter, unsalted butter. So in the restaurant business, we use unsalted butter. Uh, even if we're going to add some salt to the to the product, because um, we are going to put a teaspoon of salt in here, which I'm, for once in my life I'm going to actually measure. Um, so we use unsalted butter because um, you can always adjust the salt, right? If you put salted butter in and it's too salty, it's kind of hard to take it away, right? So there's our batter. I tell you, it's feeling a little thick, to be honest with you. Uh, Flour is not always the same, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this. This is why I'm probably not a good baker. <laughs> My other tip about making this, that's a little looser, that's good. My other tip about making this stuff is, uh, is uh, two tips, right? Uh, one is, uh, these are not the best pans right here for, 
for uh, popovers. It's better if they're deeper, uh, but they'll roll. Uh, and uh, uh, Rose and I recently communicated on social media that, that it's good to use two, right? Uh, two pans, right? Um, and uh, uh, it's also good to uh, heat them up in the, in the oven just for a few minutes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. These were heated a little bit, but I'm gonna heat them a little bit, a little bit more. So the reason we have two of them is that is that it keeps it, it, these have a propensity to burn um, it, it, because we cook them at a very high temperature for a while. How high? All right. So in the restaurant we use 450 for the first 15 or 20 minutes, and then turn it down to 375. Um, I've been finding at 425 in my oven, and then turning it down after 15 20 minutes to 375 or 350 is good. The, the initial baking has to do with with getting it to actually pop. Right, um, and uh, and then the rest of it is for cooking. In the end, it should be uh, crispy on the outside and, and kind of uh, moist and uh, on and a little even chewy even on, on the inside. Right, so um, so I'm gonna um, grab myself a ladle here. Uh, probably heated this up long enough because they were already pretty warm. I want to heat more at home. And my other trip uh, tip is, I remember. <laughs> when Rose was making these, uh, that we used a lot of spray butter on here, right? It was so much so that it seemed like it was part of the, part of the dish, right? Um, so I, I, even though these are nonstick, I'm gonna coat them really, really heavily, uh, partly so because they have a real propensity for sticking, um, and it, they turn, a lot, turn out a lot better. So normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't coat quite this heavily with spray butter. If you're wondering why I can touch the pan even though it's been in the oven, it's because over the years I've developed uh, no feeling in my fingertips. It's one of the things that happens when you're in the business. All right, so then it's just a simple matter of, of uh, taking the, uh, the batter and believe it or not, you fill it up all the way to the top. All right, this should make about a dozen of these. We'll see how it goes today. Um, and you put them in the oven and uh, so I've got great memories of, of having these started at, at Casablanca. We used to get in there at six o'clock in the morning uh, to do the brunch shift and the brunch shift was, was always the one that it was easy to get if you wanted it because this probably a surprise to you but chefs go out drinking all last all night long on Saturday night and so a lot of them don't want to go to work at, uh, in, the, in the morning on Sunday morning so uh, uh, we're gonna have 11 and a half here. So see how that goes? That's like All right, so then we it's just a question to put them into a 425 degree oven in my case for Probably 20 minutes. We'll keep an eye on May 15 uh, You look at your clock because you don't want to mess up on that uh, And then we're good to go All right, so project number two is a frittata So frittatas um, you can't believe how easy this is to make. I mean, oh my goodness. It's very, very easy. It's easier than making scrambled eggs, I think. So uh, there's no reason not to make them. So uh, again, we start with, with uh, eggs. Uh, I'm gonna make, uh, uh, so you can, you can make them in a, in a pie dish or a, or a, or a, or a, a baking dish. Um, I, I'm actually going to make them in these high-ended high, uh, bowls, which I use for French onion soup. Um, you can make them in another bowl if you, that, if you feel like putting it in the oven for yourself. Um, so it's really flexible, and I, you know, I'm trying to th think of things that we can learn how to cook in this, in this uh, age right now, um, which use up things that we have that, that are flexible, right? So, um, so it starts with eggs, uh, six of them. Uh, so frittatas are basically like a crustless quiche in a lot of ways. They don't have the same amount of uh, number of uh, uh, amount of uh, liquid in it, right? It's more egg eggy than, than uh, milky, so that's another difference. Traditionally, I'm pretty sure traditionally they're made on the stove top, which is what, which would explain the name frittata. It's, you know, fr is just just fry, fry. Um, So. Again, you don't want to beat this too much because um, the, you, it'll, it'll rise up and fall down, and uh, that's not the goal here. So um, this is basically uh, 
it's going to be an egg, egg pie without a crust. So you can make you know, quiche is fun too if you want to make quiche. You really should use more uh, liquid if you make quiche. Um, so I'm just going to use six eggs and a half a cup of, of milk. That's the recipe I like. Um, just enough to, to loosen it up a little bit. All right. And so, and uh, I'm going to have a little bit, probably a half teaspoon of uh, salt in here. I'm not a big salt man. Uh, you may want to use more. No. So, um, so there's, a, there's your egg batter. Uh, next, uh, we're going to take our, our bowls here and get them prepared. So, you can put lots of different kinds of things in brittata. Uh, the rule of thumb for me is that you can't put any, you should not put anything crispy in them, right? You should put stuff that's basically soft in them, right? Because they're not going to, it's not going to cook that much in the egg, right? So, I'm going to make one with spinach, um, but you, uh, I've made it before with artichoke hearts, uh, bacon, uh, Lots of different kinds of things, but so you want to actually cook the ingredient, um, uh, sauteed onions, sauteed peppers, jalapenos, you know, whatever you like, right? Put some herbs in there. It's very flexible. Um, but uh, today we're going to make it with spinach. But first, I got to prep prep these bowls, and the, uh, so I want to probably get a, a good uh, spray on there because once again the eggs are going to stick otherwise. And then you might remember me using some of this frozen spinach. It looks like this when it comes in. This is really good stuff to have on hand, folks, in the freezer department, because there's lots of different kinds of things that can be done with it, right? Um, but we might remember we used it, uh, uh, I think I put some in the minestrone uh, not long ago, and then uh, what else did I, I made a cream of spinach soup with it also, right, in one of our other videos. So. Uh, Boil down, put down your vegetable or meat matter, whatever it is you're gonna put in there. So it's, this is frozen chopped spinach, so it's already chopped up. You don't really wanna put fresh spinach in unless you've cooked it first, for the reasons that I'm trying to, I was trying to explain. Um, that should be enough. Uh, and then, then uh, I'm getting old, so I gotta remember what kind of cheese this is. So this is Swiss mm -hmm. cheese that I happen to have on hand. You could use cheddar, you could use lots of different kinds of cheeses really to be able to make it. feta. Might be interesting to do one with feta. Uh, I guess the one thing I would say is be careful about using tomatoes. So tomatoes cooked in eggs, you gotta be really careful because they got water content. And so you gotta figure out some way to deal with that. So cook them a little bit, um, drain some of them out, but, but uh, it will tend to make the eggs break up whether it's an omelet or, or this. So then we're just gonna put a layer of Swiss cheese down. I'm telling you right now, this is like the easiest thing. Absolutely easy, right? Um, and then you take the batter and you just put it over the top. I'm gonna split these up into two. If I was making it a pie di uh, dish, I'd just put you know all of it down in, in the same layers except for just in one dish. So that's how that would work. Um, then we're going to put them in the oven. We're going to wait a few minutes because uh, so what we're, the reason is is that so we're going to use the same oven as the popovers. But um, remember, I told you we reduced the heat of the of the oven for the popovers. Uh, it's 425 uh, now, and uh, we're going to bring it down to oh I guess we'll bring it down to 350, um, and uh, that uh, that'll be the perfect temperature for this. Um, let me talk real quickly about ovens. So um, I think I mentioned before, these are convection ovens. I have two of them. They're really worth the investment because I can put multiple things in the oven and the, and the product will turn out okay, right? You know how if you put like a half dozen pies in a, in a conventional oven, then some of them are gonna burn and not gonna cook evenly. But the, the, the fan in the oven, plus it automatically lowers the heat by 25 degrees. The fan in the oven uh, help, helps things cook evenly. So, so we've got maybe another, uh, probably eight minutes before we can actually put that in there, but uh, we'll swing over here and work on, on our omelets a little bit. So, omelets. Uh, once again, you can make omelets out of all sorts of different things, right? Very, very flexible. Um, I, uh, we, you know, when you, get to, when you get to be my age, you tend to do some of the same things all the time. So I tend to make omelets 
every week out of spinach and bacon and avocado or some or some uh, mixture of those. Uh, and so today we're going to do it. That's what we'll do. We'll do the one I have. But 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 uh, but you can um, make all kinds of different uh, uh, combinations if you'd like. But I want to talk to you, <clears throat> talk to you basically about some of the basic principles of omelet making. I know if you, you it might seem kind of difficult on the, on the surface, but it's not. There's lots of ways that you can learn how to how to do it. Believe me, I used to do them when I was barely awake, uh, working at Casablanca for years. So, um, so uh, there are basically three stages. Okay, there's the there's the stage where you sauté, lightly fry uh, some of the ingredients. Most of them are going to go in at that uh, point, right? Uh, and then there's this, the, the stage where the eggs go in and they cook for a while. Some things might go in at the egg stage, not many. Uh, and then the, in the end, you know, you, we end up making what we call a pancake. Uh, so it's, it, it's, it's cooked and round and that's when cheese, in this case the cheese and the avocado will go in, right? At that point, right? So depending on what it is you're adding. So you don't, for example, we're gonna use fresh spinach. If I added this fresh spinach in the egg stage, it wouldn't cook very well, right? I mean, it, it's still be edible, uh, but but it's a lot better if it sautés for a little while. Um, and yeah, arguably you could put the bacon in uh, at the egg stage because that's already cooked. Um, uh, the cheese you don't want to put in at the egg stage because it doesn't melt uh, uh, very well. Um, so just experiment, right? The other thing is is that it's really worth it to buy a quality egg pan. Um, so when I first started cooking, we used cast iron uh, egg pans, which we spent a lot of time trying to keep the, the finish, you know, nice. We oil them, salt them, uh, to try to keep the keep the keep the eggs from sticking. And of course, you know, once we hit the 20th century, uh, yeah, we we ended up with with uh, nonstick skillets. So um, I've been buying them about this size, and I use them so often I end up buying them probably every other year. Um, but um, you know, get to know your skillet. Uh, don't use anything abrasive to cook to clean it with, uh, because I think you find that that uh, it, it'll tear up the, the surface and then then everything will stick, and you don't want that, right? So, um, all right. So uh, I also uh, uh, there are two kinds of oil I cook with, basically. Uh, one of them is olive oil, and the other one is canola oil. Um, so you could make an omelet with olive oil. Might got an interesting flavor. Maybe if I was making one with feta cheese and tomatoes and basil and wanted a European or a Mediterranean feel, I might do that. Typically I use all, uh, canola oil because it doesn't, it has a neutral flavor, right? Uh, you cook the eggs without adding something to it. So but again, you know, to each your own, uh, just you, you do what you, what you like. You do you, right? So, uh, so you wanna, uh, uh, I'm heating the pan up because that's something that has to happen. But uh, first I take a couple of eggs. hand rinse on the eggs. Just take a small fork, beat them up a little bit. And the rest not going to be a lot of almonds we put in the mixer up with a whisk on, but just enough to get it uh, mixed up there. Alright, so the uh, our first stage is going to be um, uh, the onions, uh, pardon me, the uh, bacon and the, and the spinach uh, and, in the oil. So, pan's heating up a little bit. I'm going to bring it down to medium a little bit. You can sort of see the smoke coming off the sides. A little bit of oil there. So, another uh, tool that I, that, I, that I like to use is a, is a rubber scraper. These are great. I've got like 10 of them. Um, and they're used for, so I actually use this for turning the eggs. If you move fast, it's not going to burn your rubber scraper. Um, but they're, they're probably one of the most useful items in, the, in this kitchen. So we're going to go in with the spinach. Give the sizzle there. Maybe a little more. So this is going to be a two egg omelet. Um, if you get better at this, um, you can actually make a one egg omelet. I make a one egg omelet twice a week because I, I make it. I make a one egg omelet for myself and a two egg omelet for my wife because I don't, I don't, I have my, I, I get filled up quicker for whatever reason. Um, so, uh, but you can make it. It takes a lot of practice. I, I think you should start with uh, making a, 
a two egg uh, omelet because it's a lot, e a lot easier. Um, or three if you're you know, beefy and hungry. Um, so the, the spinach is cooked down a little bit, right? We got this on a medium heat, medium high probably. Um, and then we just go in with the eggs. Now on this, there are various ways to make an omelet. This is called the French roll method. We're not gonna do that today. Um, but this one is easier, so that's, so, and I like things being easy. So um, uh, the thing is, we, we want to get the eggs, because I'm, I'm using my spatula to, to uh, curl under a little bit and get some of the, the batter, the egg batter under there to cook. So the, probably the most important skill right now is one that all of us have patience. Patience. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't always have patience either. Uh, but you, you don't wanna, you wanna wait till it's just about the right time. And again, you know, just keep practicing. Practice, practice, practice. Um, if I'm in a hurry, my, the biggest problem I have is if I'm in a hurry and then I mess up, right? So, um, see how it moves around? Like one solid piece, that's a really good sign. Now, so now's, which, now's the piece that you really probably want to have a little bit of practice on. Hopefully it'll go well for me, otherwise this could be a funny video. There we go. So up and over. Just keep practicing that and you'll get it down. I'm going to get this on a, on, on a low heat right now because we're going to get our avocado ready. So I live in Indiana where, where avocados are, are not exactly awesome all the time. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. Um, constantly looking for a good avocado, right? Uh, yeah, I can feel it. It's not going to be perfect. Oh, not too bad. Well, there's some bad there. So, so you don't want to use that, uh, that schmegma part here, right? But you can get. If you want to store, so th I'll store this avocado, even though. Uh, much of it is not so good anymore. I'll store it um, and leave the leave the pit in it when you store it, right? Put it in one of these containers with the pit in it. So there's our avocado. Um, so next we go, we take our cheese, cheddar cheese. This is cheddar cheese. Um, I had a rap about how I like white cheddar cheese from the state of Vermont last time. So, and we'll just so fold it over about halfway like that. And then up and over like that. All right? Put it back on the heat for just a little bit. This one's cooked a little hard. It's got a little browning action going on there. Now I think we'll take a look at the see how we'll turn that off and we'll see how these go on with the with the oven light. I don't have my glasses on the light right there. There we go. Whoa! <laughs> Pop! We're talking popovers, right? And it's been now 15, 18 minutes, and they've popped, so I know I can take turn it down. So I'm gonna turn it down to, uh, to uh, 375, or 350, I said, right? 350, mm -hmm. right? So before, I would not have opened up the door of the oven before. It's just bad luck. Well, scientifically also, it's bad luck. It'll cause them to fall, right? Now, those, those bad boys, they're looking good now. They've popped up pretty good. Um, and so now I feel like I'm, I feel safe to open the door briefly. So we're gonna put, we're gonna put the frittatas in very carefully here. Those look good. All right, let those cook. So those will cook for, ooh, another 30, 35 minutes till they look nice and brown, then they're then they're done. So um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna play it up here. So uh, first off, we'll get our we'll just load our omelet onto the onto one plate. There she goes. On the restaurant, we always try to 
to imitate the curvature of the omelet, right? So uh, uh, we wouldn't have this, uh, this place so small, it doesn't tell you the, the story completely, but always make it so the curve follows the, follows the action of the plate. It looks better, right? Um, it's still kind of neurotic years later after that. Well, as you probably can guess, I've actually made the other two things already. Just like Julia Child was always had something else in the oven for you. So let's take a couple of those out. First we've got our, our, uh, our frittata. Cut that up, loosen that up a little bit. Um, and we'll just, with any luck, this will actually come out. Oh my goodness, yeah. So there's our frittata. Um, if, if you're doing it in a baking tray, there's no sense in doing that. You can just cut it open, cut it up and eat it, right? Like if it's like any kind of a cake or whatever. So there are those. Um, and now let's see our, uh, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, this batch of popovers is gonna be better than the one I did before. So it's probably just good luck that you guys are with me. So the other ones pop, but not quite the same degree. Um, Stir these up in a nice little uh, bowl. So the popovers we would serve with, with butter, as if you need any more butter. Butter and raspberry jam. Oh my goodness, they're so good that way. Right? Um, so there's your brunch or your breakfast. You can eat this meal any time of the day. Right? You've got your popovers, you've got the, the frittata, and you've got the omelet, and, and you can mix and match the kinds of things that you, that you happen to have left over in, the, in your COVID kitchen right now that can be used up. Um, so think creatively, right? Until next time, bon appetit.